2020 Olympic gold medalist, freestyle wrestling, national champion from the University of Minnesota. Everyone was wondering where will Gable Stevenson go? Well, on Thursday, we found out Gable is going back to school, but it's with a twist. Signed an NIL deal, name, image, likeness deal with WWE, unprecedented stuff, first of its kind. So had to have him back on to talk about it all. Gable, congratulations on the big news, on the big decision. Appreciate you coming on. Yo, what's up? I appreciate you having me again. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. It's been uh, it's been great to follow your journey and to see you make all these right moves. And I think you made another smart one. Uh, I suggested that this would be the best path for you to go down the quote unquote Brock Lesnar route of pro wrestling first and then maybe combat. But let me ask you, when did you make this decision in your mind that you would go back to school, sign the NIL with WWE? When did it all come together for you? I mean, it all came together probably. The, the going back to school thing came way before I went to the Olympic Games. I wanted to go back and win a national title. Um, adding that on with the WWE, it came really quick because they allowed me to come back. And I was like, why wouldn't I wrestle one more year and go on stage with WWE? So it just, it was a win-win and I had to take the opportunity. Wait a second. So you knew about this like weeks ago? You were playing us this whole time? The whole time you knew? <laughs> I mean, you were working us, as they say in the business. You were kayfabing us, Gable. You got to, you got to. Did you have the deal with WWE like when you were on NXT last year when I saw you there in the front row and all? No, no. Okay. I, I had nothing. I had nothing back then. I, that was just me saying that I wanted to be on the WWE. That was just like me putting out tweets trying to gain traction. But um, after the Olympics, that's when it turned serious, like real, real talks, real business talks. And so when I talked to you beforehand, I already kind of figured where I was going to go, yeah. like knew like 90 percent. But, you know, I told you a little 60 percent I knew and this and this, but I kind of already knew where I was going to go. Wow. OK, we got work. I mean, pro wrestler, you got to work us. I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. did, so so did WWE at any point try to convince you, hey, forget college, you won the championship, national championship. You're good there. Come to us full time. No NIL. Did that ever come up? Uh, that actually never came up. They, I told them that I wanted to go back and finish school and their number one priority was like, you can do that. And so I was like, OK, let's do a and I name him as like this deal because it came out in July. Yeah. And so I told him I want to go back. Uh, Vince, Nikon and Triple H all said, uh, go ahead, win on the national title. Um, regardless, everything will still be in place for you. We'll just we'll do this, this, and this for you, and you go back, get your degree, and we'll see you after that. So, a part of my deal is I can go on stage during my school year time. So, that's kind of cool too. Wait, what do you mean? So you could be a part of the show, the WWE show, while you're competing at Minnesota? Yeah. Really? Yes. How difficult yep. was that? because this is a brand new world in the world of collegiate athletics to get Minnesota and the NCAA to sign off on this. How difficult was that for you and your team? I think that was a fairly easy task. They signed off. Minnesota signed off really quick on it. And since it's sports entertainment, you know, um, it's not like I'm going out there and doing NFL with college football. You can't do the both of that. So I think uh, the way the NCAA rule worked, I was able to work it that I can make an onstage appearance against whoever and then wrestle a duel the next day if I got back in time. So wow. my, my first obligation is to, to compete at Minnesota. But, you know, I got I got two big obligations right now. But first, I got to wrestle in Minnesota. But at the same time, I will be who knows when I would make my start, but I will be on stage here. So um, my understanding and, and I'd love for you to clear it up. So they're going to have some sort of training facility, like a whole thing for you at Minnesota. They're setting something up for you so that you can train to be a pro wrestler at the same time while you're training and competing for Minnesota. Is that accurate? Very accurate. Yes. Who will be training you in pro wrestling while you're doing all of that? Um, I believe, uh, there's going to be, there's going to be people coming up from a performance center, like coaches that'll, that'll come train me and a couple other bigger names. So, well, it'll be a fun time. Have you, have you done any of this yet? Like, have you run the ropes? Have you taken bumps? Have you done that whole thing yet? Yeah. I've run the ropes a few times. And I actually, when I, when I first went to the performance center back in April, when WrestleMania was my first time there, I was actually in the ring wrestling with, um, a guy that used to wrestle at App Appalachian state me and him were going at it. So I, I actually got the feel of the ring already and I know how to bump off, fall, and it's just uh, just perfecting it and getting better at it. Have you talked to any guys who have come from collegiate wrestling to pro wrestling about the transition, about you know what to look out for, the ups and downs? Have you picked any of their brains? I, I haven't. Um, my brother's down to PC right now, but besides talking to guys like Lesnar and Triple H and such like that, um, I haven't actually like talked to another collegiate wrestler that's been in the WWE. 
Okay, how big of a part of all of this was Brock? Uh, he was a he was a good part, you know. Um, just because he's he's the Brock Lesnar path, like we talked about. He started with WWE, he NFL with the Vikings, made it all the way to the final stages, get on the team, and then UFC. So, I mean, the Brock Lesnar route is is hopeful for me, and I want to uh, pay my own way in my own. Like I want to do my own destiny. So um, right. he was a, he was a big help in this. So it was it was cool that he had the guy he gave me the guidance. He didn't listen to your advice about the the hair though. <sighs> Sad. I mean, I don't know why he didn't. It. I mean, it's it's <laughs> he. I mean, everything else looks good. He he looks very fit. He's got the flannel shirt. He was at SmackDown. I know you were there as well. I thought they were gonna. I thought they were gonna introduce you. I thought they were gonna have some sort of thing out there. I mean, you're in attendance. You just signed. Was that ever discussed? Uh um. <laughs> I don't know if it's my obligation to say all that. Oh, okay. Well, I just, but, asked, <laughs> I just asked the question. You can say whatever you want. Was nah, that a thing? Uh, yeah. It was, I mean, it, it was, I'm, I'm going to get introduced here one of these days, but okay. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know anything. Just, just go with the flow right now. That was a fun show though, right? Yeah, it was really cool. You were there. I was there in the front. Yeah, my kids were there. Heyman was coming up to my kids. Were, I, it was nuts. It was like one of the best nights I've ever had as a dad. I didn't know Trey Young was going to come out. I was backstage and didn't even see him. Oh, wow. When he came out, that was lit when he came out. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah. Trey Young, the heel, sticking it to the Knicks fans. Um, in an alternate universe, Gable, what do you do? If there is no NIL, if this is last summer and you have to make a call, what do you end up doing? I would probably still return to Minnesota. You know, um, especially last summer with COVID, we didn't really get to experience fans. And so for me to come back, it's not even about me coming back. Like I could, I can move on and go to WWE. I didn't even, I just wanted to have the the fans see me one more time. Like I wanted to have like the kids come say hey to me and, and have like an idol that they can see that's here in Minnesota in their backyard. And that's what I was most worried about. Like I didn't care about going out there winning national title. I know I can go win a national title. I know I can go be dominating. I know I can win the highest trophy again. I wanted the people to see me one more time and have that access to to be next to me and have that access to see me perform and right in front of their eyes. You know, people spend thousands of dollars on season tickets and why would I not come back and give them my 100%, you know? So it would be crazy for me not to come back. I also think that this is unprecedented because it's it's somewhat of a window into what might happen in other sports in NCAA. Like, you know, we, we obviously saw so many guys over the years either not go to college or stay for one year, freshman year, and then go to the NBA, let's say. I wonder, do you think as someone, because, you know, you have all this money waiting for you, all these opportunities, but you're like, no, I want to go back. I believe you want to graduate as well. That's a big part of it. Um, you want to compete. You want to defend. And you could still kind of get, I mean, you could, you could reap the rewards, but you could do all that. Do you think that this will now change the, la the landscape of, let's say, basketball, where guys who in the past would have left after the freshman year will now stick around longer, which I think is ultimately better for them and the sport, um, get these NIL deals, but not jump to the NBA sooner than probably they're ready to do so? Oh, yeah, especially a lot of the... A lot of high school players that are that are not going to college and going to the G League, like Jalen Green and yep. Josh Kumunk, the guys like that, um, they didn't want to go to college just because they they didn't get no no bread or no money. And so guys like that are gonna go to the G League. And so with this NIL, I think it's gonna separate a lot of kids that can that really want to go to college but didn't have the money. But now they can go to college and have millions of dollars to go play for a year and then go to the league or even stay for four years, get the degree be a student of the game, learn from the best coaches like Coach K and Calipari and stuff like that, and then go to the league. So there's there's so much that's in between. And obviously it's, it's their decision, but I feel like with a lot of athletes, you're going to probably see a lot of them staying because they can stay on a college campus and, and be the face of their campus and then leave. Is there a cap to how much you can earn as far as NIL is concerned? Or if you can get it, like the, the, you can get an infinite amount of money? Infinite amount wow. of money. I'm sorry. That's tremendous. And so there's really yeah. like, as long as you're not competing, like you're not, I, I, I suppose you can't do NF, you can't play in the NFL and also compete in, in wrestling in Minnesota. But as long, like in this case, sports entertainment, you're all good. They won't stop yep. you from making X amount. Oh. Wow. That is tremendous. I can, as, I can make as much as I want. That's amazing. Now, as far as the WWE deal is concerned, how many years is it for? Uh, after this year, it's for three years. Okay. Does this year count as one of the three? Nope, this year does not count. Is this, this year is just like, this is extra. So yeah, I get extra and then the three years. Does it kick in after the tournament is over? Yep, right away. Okay. 
Uh, is the plan for you to debut in that world, like in April? Like it's around WrestleMania time. I could see them debuting you at WrestleMania. Like, is that the plan, or do you think you'll have some leeway there? Uh, <laughs> no comment. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, is the plan still at some point to do MMA? Yes, it is. As of right now, yeah, yes. As of right now, I'm 100 WWE, and I will forever probably be. Um, you know, it, it would be cool to, to hold a UFC, but like I said before, I know there's a lot of people on Twitter that always saw if you didn't want to go to the UFC right away, but, you know, I want to I want to pay it my own way. I don't want to follow what no one else does. You know, I don't even read Twitter comments anymore. They're just terrible. Is it bad? And Are you so, getting a lot of hate? I'm just getting a lot of hate, you know? You know, people are just like, oh, you want to go here and do this instead of actually fighting somebody yourself. Well, you know how it goes. It's, yeah. it's, it's typical, typical haters, you know? But, uh, I mean, if that time came, I would love to fight. You know, I... I secured the, the Olympics, Olympic gold in, in wrestling. I think we talked about we talked about this before, but why not go out there and um, get the UFC belt? You know, there's a guy to your right of you holding it up. That's and right. He's Olympian too. That's right. Daniel Cormier. Well, he didn't I, get no Olympic gold, though. He didn't. Yeah. I wish he did, though. Yeah. I wish he did. He's I a great dude. I love BT. I, I love, love BT. BT. We still got to play 2K. He's been dodged. We the new 2K came out. I'm actually really excited because Ronnie, um, Ronnie 2K DM me, he said he's going to give me a player build. And so I'm ready for it. You know what I'm saying? DC, the, he don't want smoke. He's scared of me. He barely texts me anymore. He's a soft. Wow. So, you think he's mad? You, know, you, know, you think he's mad he, gotta went, be he went WWE and not UFC? Nah, I think he made a good choice. He told me to go that way. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> did, did they come uh, back? Did they, you know, you said on the show, and I appreciate the honesty that, you know, Dana didn't reach out and all that stuff. After you said that, did anyone reach out to you to try to convince you to come over there? Uh, no, no one. I mean, I seen a lot of um, tweets saying that Dana wanted me in Contender Series, but I wouldn't. I don't even know because me and Dana only had like a couple of text messages saying like, "Hey, come to Vegas." But I was in SummerSlam, and I told you that I couldn't make it to him, so I didn't ditch him. We barely spoke. Um, he i know he wanted me to come but i didn't i don't know what the contender series thing came about on the news and stuff and we just we barely spoke and, and vince had the upper hand and so i mean i've been knowing wwe longer than sure. ufc so i wanted to start my start my path there um so to the best of your knowledge that contender series idea was never actually brought to you no it was never brought to me i had no clue about it uh would that have changed anything i mean there's not a lot of big money in contender series no, nah, I, yes. I wanted the one of my own path. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but um, are are you bummed that there was never a serious offer made? And like, were you hoping that they would come strong, or were you just hoping? I was, yeah, I was, I was hoping Dana would have came a lot stronger. I would. I was hoping that he would have pushed the pace a little more. You know, I would. I would love to fight. You know, I'm not scared of fighting. I'm not scared of getting punched. I'm not scared of going out there and losing in front of a big crowd or, or winning in front of a big crowd. It doesn't matter to me. I go out there to entertain people and, and for the love of myself to do something that I love. I mean, I love fighting and I love WWE. Like, I love both. So I wish Dana would have came a little hard. I wish he would have um, had more, like, push on me to, to go that way. But that time is that time is up for now. And I'm 100% with Vince McMahon and, and the, that team. And, I mean, I'm excited to be where I'm at. I yeah. mean, there's no way that, that I would want to have it. By the way, just like Bellator, PFL, did the, any of those guys make a serious offer? Uh, not really. No, nothing. nothing. They made, some of them made serious. You know, they, they talked to my agent, Dave Martin. Yeah. I don't really hear. Whenever Dave relays messages to me, it's what I get. But other than that, just I was just focused on WWE and, and UFC. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned your brother. So your brother's at the Performance Center, too. Is he older or younger than you? He's older. He's 25. So he so he wants to go down this path as well uh, to be a pro wrestler. Um, he just started, right? Didn't they just sign him recently, somewhat recently? Yep, they just signed him a few weeks ago. How's that going? He likes it a lot down there. He um he's he's getting the hang of. Bobby's not a really big talker. He's not a really big like actor type. So he's kind of um introverted. So he's got to bring out another side into him. And so. I think he's got it. I think he's got it in him. We'll see how he does at the NXT level. So it's just a, a matter of how he's going to do it. Is he going to work hard? And I, I believe he's got other tools to be the be the next star too. How much does he weigh? He's about two. He'd be lying on his weight. Uh, um, like, is he bigger than you? I'm just trying to get a mental like. Uh, he about he about um he about five he about five ten two forty five. Okay, so he's a big boy. He's um, a big I'm, boy. Yeah, he's big. He's big. I'm I'm a lot bigger than him, like right. body and look wise. But he's he's a big dude. 
Uh, is this something you guys talked about? Like, is it a bit surreal that you're both, you know, part of the WWE family now? Did you guys talk about this as kids? We actually never talked about it. He he really never mentioned WWE until uh, probably like last year. He wanted to to get into it, and like it's it's all a decision. Really? He I think I think it was actually a great decision. He he just randomly was like, I want to try it out. I, I'm not wrestling at the Gophers anymore. I want to go try it out. So he got a hold of Heyman and, and Triple H and those guys, and now he's getting a shot at at the performance center. So that's that's real cool. But wow. it, it is cool that we're in the business. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, and by the way, you mentioned uh, Paul Levesque, Triple H. I, I want to send him uh, my best. That's a scary thing that he's going oh my through. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah, sad. You know, uh, Triple H. He's he's been there for me since probably like he loves you freshman year. Yeah, that's my dog. Like literally, so he's been there since my freshman year um, of college. I met him backstage, and ever since then, he st- he stayed in contact and never left. So like, I, it was sad hearing that he had that type of that type of health issue. And you know, I saw um, his wife Stephanie McMahon um, a couple of days ago at in Madison Square Garden, and I gave her my own couple words, and so. Yeah, I hope he's getting better quick, for real. Yes, um, and of course, NXT's baby, but my my thing that I heard, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like, there's a chance, you know, with them changing, you might not g- go that route. Like, in the past, someone like you, you go NXT, and then you go to main roster. Is there a chance that you go straight to the main roster? Uh, there is. I think um, there's a very big chance that I might go straight to the main roster and, and not be in NXT. You know, I was open for anything, but um, with the way things are going, I think I'm going to jump straight to the main roster and I know there's a lot to learn and I'm I'm ready to soak everything in like a sponge and just be ready to go out there and put on a good show for the crowd. Yeah. Uh, wow. So it could be like this time next year, you're like in the mix this time next year, you're, you're, you're defending champ. You're already in the mix. You're doing your thing. Do you, do you know what kind of style you'll have as, as a, like, what, what do you think you'll, who do you think you'll be? You'll be a little Kurt Angle style. You'll be a bit of a bruiser style like Brock. What do you think your style will be? I don't know my style yet, but I think I I think I can um, pull off American Hero Hero really well, you know. Ah. Especially being a little medalist, you know. Kurt was the only one to, you know. I don't got a broken freaking neck, and I hear it all day on Twitter. Like you don't have a broken neck, you're not the real gold medalist. Get it? And so I hear it all day on Twitter. All my messages are you don't have a broken neck, but I'm sorry I didn't have a broken neck. I still got a gold medal. Like you you want a gold medal, uh, like in the freaking last yeah. seconds, like one of the great <laughs> comebacks in <laughs> Olympic history. Screw those people. I can't believe people talking smack to you. That's crazy. Now I don't feel that bad. Like, could you imagine them talking smack to me? I'm just a puny nobody. You're a freaking Gable. Like, and, and, they, and they, they, they talk tough to you. That just shows how crazy people are. Very crazy. Internet warriors is how it goes. Everyone's an internet warrior. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many styles that I can play. There's so many styles that I'm ready to play, and I'm, I'm happy and open to anything. American hero, bruiser, heel, bad guy, whatever, good guy. I mean, I think I got the, char- the characteristics and charisma to be everything. And so I'm just waiting for my time. And you'll see when I step on the stage what I'm going to be. Any talks with your coach at Minnesota about, you know, like, look, man, you're coming back. you got to be all in here, right? I mean, everyone's coming for you. you got the bullseye. Not only are you defending champ, you're the Olympic gold medalist. And he talks about, you know, I get what you're doing, but you need to be all in here. You can't be half. You can't be half in WWE, half in NCAA wrestling. Is he worried about that? No, he's not worried about that. We we go hard. I mean, me and Coach Egum and all of our coaches at Minnesota, we go hard in the wrestling room. Our focus is 100% win the national title first and be that WWE while I'm there second. And so it it all equals out to this one thing at one. Like, nothing is above anything. So WWE, when I go on on stage, my, that's my character. I go out there and do my thing. I come right back to wrestling, refocus, and I'm and I'm back on the mat. And so... We um we actually haven't had no talks like that, but they know I I'm they know I'm ready. I mean, I stepped off to the airplane at the Olympics and days later I was back in the weight room getting ready to go to the world championships, but I had to decline because I was just too busy. And so I'm ready to wrestle right now and I'm ready to go to Oslo for the for the freestyle world champions again, but I can't because I declined already and I didn't wrestle the trials because I was just running around meeting right. everybody. Right, right, right. Uh what about twenty twenty four Paris? It's um it just depends how my don't be kayfabing me gable don't be kayfabing me again all right i know when the i know when kayfabe gable pops up and i see him <laughs> popping up again i can't say too much okay have you do you know what you're gonna do <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do yet you know that's a long ways away but you know, I'm, it's I'm actually not that long it's three years it's it's shorter than usual three years, I'm, I'm always ready okay i'm always ready so you're not saying no this doesn't in, in other words, this this whole situation doesn't mean that you are closing the door on defending the gold. 
That's what I don't know. It all depends on my obligation with WWE. Like I said, after this year, I'm 100 percent with WWE until my de- until that deal is up. And yeah. if I resign, then I'm still 100 percent with them. So it's all it's. I'm not the I'm not the boss of the situation, okay. so I can't I, I can't say so. I feel. Oh, and just a couple more things. Um, what are the chances between now and March that you actually compete? in WWE like could you th- that's that's allowed right you could compete in WWE while the season is going on yes yes is it's there, allowed yeah could this happen it could that's very wild. likely very likely very, very likely oh my yeah, god yeah very, very likely wow but who knows I, mean, I don't know what day it could be Monday Night Raw today yeah <laughs> or it could be Monday Night Raw on Friday I mean I don't know it it could happen any day now but well, we'll I recognize this little room that you're in. This isn't. I'm assuming this is in Minnesota because you were here last time, and I don't think yeah, you're in this, Minnesota. I'm at home right now. Okay, I mean, you could fly right after this. It's not that tough for someone like no, you. Private. That's right. That's. I mean, you're 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 a Heyman guy, so Heyman's got the private jets. I know that lifestyle. Um, so this is all very exciting, man. So, uh, in conclusion, you sign with the WWE NIL deal. You're staying for one last year. In uh, at Minnesota, you're going to defend the title, but you're also going to graduate, which is a big deal to you. Three year deal. In the next ten years, you will also, while still being a WWE guy, make the move over to MMA, win the heavyweight title there, and then you'll be the first ever, I do believe, Olympic champ, NCA champ, WWE champ, UFC champ. If it plays out like that, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, you, you played it perfectly, man. You did a great job. Uh, way to go. I think you made the right call. Uh, and I'm invested. I'm not a big, you know, DC always trying to get me into NCAA wrestling. You got to watch this, that. Masvidal the same. You got to watch now. Now I'm invested. This, this, is, this, is, what I, uh, this is what I really liked about it um, because WWE is so mainstream and, and college wrestling is not really that big compared like NCAA football and NCAA basketball. So, for for me to do this and come back, I think every WWE fan that is that is will potentially be a fan of me has to tune in to the national tournament, has to tune into our for duels, sure. and every NCAA wrestling fan has to tune in to WWE if they're a fan of me. 100%. And so, like, just think about how big college wrestling may be this year just because of an NIL deal with WWE, which is crazy, you know. But no, I, I I'm that guy. Like, I will now be invested. Watch you. Um, long before the tournament, maybe I could come down there and watch. I would love that. I, I would love to experience it. I've never experienced you it. You got to pull up first duel. Oh, what is it? when is that? DC's got to pull. DC's got to pull up first duel because we wrestle Oklahoma State. Oh, wow. when is that? When is that? I think it's November. Uh, it's not, hold on. Oh, I will. November. I will root for Minnesota. Gophers all the way. November fourteenth. Okay, I believe you, you. So it's Minnesota versus Oklahoma State first duel. First duel at Minnesota. Smush their faces into the mat, all right? And then kick them. Oh DC that. was dirty, too. He used to kick people. Yeah, DC would kick people. He would get into fights. You see that? Look it up on YouTube. DC would get into fights. He was I'm dirty. Dirtiest player in the game, Daniel Cormier. I know he's dirty. That's why I said he's, he, that's why he's avoiding me. Because he knows I might do the same thing to him. So. Well, he's watching right now. He'll probably respond. He'll probably respond. He's secretly he's watching everything. Right yeah. <laughs> uh, Gable, congratulations, <laughs> my man. Very happy for you. Looking forward to it. Good luck this season, and we'll talk to you soon. Yes, thank you for inviting me. See you again. All right, there he is, Gable Stevenson, the man. Remember the name. I mean, you probably.